Hello and welcome back to Kirsten's Cove. Are you a fan of Taylor Swift? Are you a fan of Bridgerton? Well, if you saw in my last video with my interview with Emma, there was one question that was left out on purpose. And if you've already read the title of this video, then you know we are assigning our favorite Bridgerton characters their Taylor Swift era. So I'm curious if you will agree, disagree, or what your thoughts are. See that cat creating absolute chaos. <laughs> Speaking of chaos, let's get into it. All right, are you ready for probably one of the hardest questions that I have? Okay, what is it? Being a Taylor Swift fan. <laughs> okay. And with Bridgerton season three coming out in about a month. Oh, okay. I have a list of Bridgerton characters and I would love for you to assign them their Taylor Swift era. Oh, okay. <laughs> interesting because <laughs> i originally wanted this to be like super about like bridgerton season three and then i was just like i have lots of other things to ask you so this is how we're sticking bridgerton season three into this um, yeah oh my god i love this question i feel like this is gonna be really hard but okay okay exactly why do you think i saved this for last and then we're going to play exactly that's rough okay <laughs> all right so we are gonna start with the the siblings I have left mm. the last three out. So it's the three yeah. that are like only like the ones that the really babies. Is like Hyacinth, mm -hmm. Francesca, and Gregory. We, we don't really know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they kind of feel like debut and a little forgotten. Yeah. So. <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> We're going to start with our oldest, our favorite, our favorite Bridgerton man, Anthony, or Anthony. And you can go off of like where we left him in season two, if you would like, or mm, yeah, because like, it would be different. One <laughs> yeah, so you can choose which season you wanna you label him off as, and this is going to be like not for when we get to like Penelope and Colin, like not knowing what is about to happen, just what what we know of them right now. Right, right. Um, oh man, Anthony. Um. I mean, I know what I would say for Kate, but for Anthony, he's a lot more complex and he definitely went through like a really, really big journey. I think, I mean, he's got like a hard edge, but he really has a soft heart. So maybe I'd go with red. Oh, okay. Like, I was definitely expecting reputation. See, that's what I would say because for like, Kate. So my with, honestly, I think I would have switched them because from, in my oh. opinion, with Anthony in season two, he, because like he was engaged to Edwina and then like immediately switched yeah. and like married Kate, like the Bridgerton family name was like, it was on the rocks. Like it was... That's going true. through it and he chose like the love he chose himself he chose what he wanted which is kind of what reputation was about and it has a hard edge but then you also have song here like delicate that like yeah are a little bit softer and like the love so i would have but also red very much works yeah i feel like red just has <sighs> red with a reputation mood <laughs> yeah exactly exactly there we go there we go yeah 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 because i feel like yeah him a reputation could definitely work for him too. I definitely see that, especially with the family name going through it and everything. That totally makes sense to me. But I don't know. I feel like he just. I feel like Red is just more of a journey. Like reputation is a journey, yeah. but it's more of just like a one, like not one note. That's the wrong way to put it. Like I am who I am, and I'm saying this thing, you know. And this is this is this is what it's I am. Kind is. of like the aftermath. Yeah. Like the like, yeah. After. So maybe like red with a reputation moon. There you go. <laughs> like. I like it. Okay, so now Benedict. We don't know much about him, but we do know a little bit. So what about Ooh, Benedict? This boy. I am so excited to see his season. I I have not read the books at all, so I know nothing. I feel like they're really deviating with his character from what I've seen online, but I love his character. Like, I love the diversity. I love how his storyline is going. Um, oh man, I almost want to do like, either fearless or folklore, <laughs> like, because 
He's so artsy, but I also think he's really dramatic and like he would love a dance in the rain and he just like is enjoying life, like having his time with his, his drugs and his art. I, I feel like he's just kind of vibing and I feel like Fearless is just kind of a vibey one. I don't know. I think that. I agree. My initial reaction was, was Midnight's just because of him being chaos just straight chaos and midnight felt like a bounce all around of one day really sad because he didn't think he was good enough to get into the art institute and then he gets into the art institute and then he's drugged up and then he's hooking up with all the people the yeah. <laughs> and then finds out that he was it was he didn't actually get into the art institute you know what and like there's that our boy we haven't heard it yet but he might actually be ttpd <laughs> He's very angsty. You know what? <laughs> and he's very up that... and down. <laughs> yeah. That's the vibe I'm getting. We might, yeah, I, I think I was, for any of them, I think I would assign that to him. Even though we haven't heard it yet, but. I think Eloise also has the chance to be. Very true. Wonderful. Yes. Very true. Um, we are almost Eloise. So Colin, for what we currently know about Colin. <laughs> oh, man. See, here's the thing with Colin, and I, <laughs> I think it's going to be like a journey through the season with him. Because he, I feel like he started out as so nonchalant and very likable in season one. And then he became kind of like an F-boy in season two, and he had his whole like journey and whatever. And he's loving a woman who's married, and I'm like, bro. Um, like, I just don't think that he knows what's in front of him or like he just doesn't appreciate anything that's like right there oh man are we in like a betty inez and what's the dude's name in that james yeah yeah james. like maybe he's, just, maybe he's folklore then. just like i think folklore would fit him best because he's not any of her earlier albums a hundred percent he's not debut he's not fearless he's not speak now it would have to be the later work Evermore is too trippy for him. So I think Folklore, because Folklore is very story -telly, And I think that man is just on a journey, and I think he tells himself a lot of stories. <laughs> like, and, like, I think he's... The stories of his adventures <laughs> and his letters like, that are going unwritten or, like, unresponsive from what we know about season three. Sorry, that just... I mean, like, illicit <laughs> affairs. Like, he went after Marina. Like, I... Yep. Yeah, I think I think folklore is a good vibe for him, and then like invisible string. If we're talking about him and Penelope in the future, yeah. I think and honestly, I like even through season one and season two, you can tell that like he felt something. I just think he thought that like he wasn't supposed to. Yeah, I don't know if he did. Like, he, he wasn't just supposed see, to, like, or that he looks or like he didn't. Like it was always there, but he didn't recognize it for what it was. Like he was like. Yeah. Oh, this is how friendship feels or whatever, because all his other relationships were very chaotic. Like, Marina was like a train wreck, so... Yeah. I don't know. But hey, we're getting jealous Colin this season, and I love a jealous arc. I'm here for it. <laughs> I'm here for it. Yes. All right, Daphne. Oh, baby Daphne. What a queen. Ooh. That's hard, because... I feel like my favorite thing about her and about that season, like about their relationship in general, was just how they, she usually took the lead on it, but she just always said how she felt. And I love that because I hate a miscommunication trope. I hate a miscommunication <sighs> yeah. trope so much. <laughs> and where Kate and Anthony were kind of like dancing around each other for a while and it was beautiful angst and very Pride and Prejudice. But I love how Daphne just would not let him shy away. And she was like, this is how I feel and you're going to deal with it. I really liked that a lot. So I almost want to put her in Lover. I was going to say, I think Lover is yeah. kind of the right answer. Because it's like, we have Death by a Thousand Cuts, which I think that like she was just like the the standoff scene. Like you have yes. the... And also, like, scene that scene and... between her and Eloise also, which I think is, as an eldest daughter, all oh, that hit. <laughs> Man, that hit hard. And then, yeah, I feel like... She was just, like, 
she just wanted love. That was like her big thing. She just wanted a love match. Yeah. And I think Lover has a good combination of like really soft, beautiful, straight in your face, very happy songs and also very, very depressing. Like <laughs> my world is going to suck if this one thing doesn't happen type songs. <laughs> so yeah, I, I, I agree. No, we go Lover for her. All right. Eloise. Oh my God. I am also really psyched for her storyline, which again, I think is deviating from the books, which I know some fans have issues with, but I, not being a reader, I love a class, class difference romance. I think. Yeah, this, it's very different from, I know who she ends up with in books and who we've already met, but it's not the person that, it's not the printer. I know, I've read that, and I'm like, but they're building up the printer so much, and I love that. I'm loving her journey of, like, discovering, like, feminism and protesting with him and, like, figuring out that she's privileged. I don't know what her journey is in the books, but I I love... Which is funny, because she she was one of my least favorite characters in the first season. I thought she was so annoying. (laughs) But I really love her journey. Um... She was also, like, 13 in the first season, like... I mean, yeah. So, like, we also get to, like, see them grow up. So, like, we get to see them realize yeah. life. I think... I think I would go with 1989 for her. Which I know she could... I feel like she could be a lot of T-Swift albums, to be honest. She is just Taylor Swift. <laughs> <laughs> but, like... <laughs> I don't know. I know places like she's going to like places she shouldn't. She's got clean where she's like figuring out that she's very privileged and she's trying to like get out of life and like get out of certain situations. And then uh, as a whole, she's just like fully in a new world discovering all of these things for the first time. And I feel like that was kind of T-Swift's vibe in that era of just like moving to New York and trying new things and just being very, very young like, and open. Internal yeah. journey. Like Yeah. Yeah. But I mean on the And like finding like, yourself. Yeah. And I mean like I think that Taylor writes about that a lot. So like she I feel like she could be a lot of things. <laughs> like her and Benedict, I agree, are very similar. And I think that one or both of them could also be tortured poets department, depending on how that era battles out, but I don't know. I think nineteen eighty nine, because she's she's discovering things, but she's also really young and naive still. And I feel like Tortured Poets is just a little bit more growing up. Like, in theory. Again, we haven't heard it yet. But from what we've seen, I feel like it's more assured of itself as a... For everyone watching, we are recording this four hours before yes. <laughs> comes out. Yes. So we have... <laughs> and this, this will be coming out on the 25th, so it'll have already been out for a week. <laughs> yes. So there may be amendments that will be in... Kirsten can put stuff at the bottom. Like, we decided that, in fact, Eloise was. We later decided that someone else is going to yeah. like, oh, um, I also just realized that, like, Benedict also could be very much speak now of those, like, highs and lows yeah. that, like, he experiences. Of, like, very enchanted... Yeah. Love to, like, meet you, Superman, and then haunted mm-hmm. and better than we like... Yeah. There's a lot that of up and down that one too. Highest highs and the lowest lows, and so like, I think, yeah. Sorry, I just I was just like, well, that could work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you're. But also, right. the next person can easily be <laughs> sweet now, in my opinion, Queen Charlotte. Oh my god, that series shattered my heart into a million pieces. I know. I still to this day have not oh. been able to rewatch it. I would love to. I think it was a beautiful piece of work. But it just broke me. Um, that one, I mean, has to be Evermore folklore to me. Maybe Midnight's? I feel like it, it, I feel like she's just so, it, actually, it could be Midnight's. I feel like she's just very, very, very stoic. And she holds a lot in. And she's always internalizing. She so good <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> I mean, that one too. But like... <laughs> I mean, anti-hero? I feel like Queen Charlotte would rock anti-hero. Or like... You know, that, I mean, that not folklore. Thought, like, I think it. Evermore or Midnight's. I think. I, the only reason I thought of like Speak Now for her is like the enchanted... Like she's enchanted to meet George. 
and then also like, true queen like sh- like the show queen charlotte was very much like the enchanted speak now kind of side of it mean and then you have her as an adult or of like better than revenge and haunted and like mm. just the life that like i mean haunted is a good one too have had and realizing all of that just like yeah her highs and lows yeah honestly haunted was just like the thing that was just like i think was just her song to george yeah yeah which is really heartbreaking for me to say but i just think that i think anything any of taylor's tracks that make you rip your heart out would probably apply to queen charlotte (laughs) like like i it's all okay the duke oh man our our duke I feel like this man put up such a front and then actually he's like the biggest teddy bear in the freaking world. Um, he was a traumatized little teddy bear. Yeah, true. You definitely have to get behind his walls to get to know him. You know what? I think he is Midnight's. Just the... With the trauma? Husband. I don't remember. Like, I'm the anti-hero. I... Yeah. Like don't want like this like lavender haze like i don't want it or like we're like kind of like in this like little bubble and yeah i could say i on the beach like it's a magic thing that's never gonna happen you're losing me <laughs> yeah you're on your Definitely. own kid Definitely. De- oh yeah he takes on everything yeah midnight's i i feel with that sorry i kind of answered that one for you <laughs> no you're right though you're still right i feel like we're answering it together so penelope what would you, oh what would her God. era be? I'm so mad at Penelope. <laughs> I'm so mad at her. <laughs> I know it's her season and I'm really interested to see what they do with it to redeem her because I don't like her right now. Um, I feel like she's kind of like a morally gray villain. I'm so indifferent about her right now. Like I'm angry, yeah. but I also feel awful for her. The way- I understand everything about why she did what she did. I don't like that she lied to Eloise. I don't think that was right, but I understand why she did. And I understand every reasoning behind it. And that's like the hardest part of like, I get every single reason about why you're doing what you're doing. Yeah. And I don't think you could have gone about this in any way that would have been the right way. It was always going to end like this. Yeah. The point that the fact that she lied doesn't bother me, but the things that she said to Eloise in their fight were not okay. And I feel that Eloise was a lot more justified in the things that she said to Penelope. And then Penelope just like, I was like, bro, take a step back. <laughs> like, ooh. I don't remember the fight very well. I need to go back and rewatch it. But like that whole thing, I was like, no, not a fan. I mean, I know I'm going to be a fan of her again, and I know that I'm going to love this season, but, like, at this point, I'm like, ugh. You're on thin ice, Penelope. You're on thin ice for me. I... Jesus, where would I put Penelope? <laughs> There's a lot of Midnights in this cast, but I feel like Midnights or Folklore would probably be good. What about Reputation? Or maybe season three will be her Reputation. Yeah, Probably. Because right now I think she's just storytelling and she's a little bit delusional. And I think both of those like albums are just a little bit like, I mean, she is the problem. So I feel like <laughs> Midnight's is, is probably good for her. Like, ah, I want to love her on Vigilante shit, but she's also got Mastermind down and like everything. So... Maybe she'll redeem the mastermind thing. She like, yep. Maybe she'll redeem herself in the end, and and I'll enjoy the vigilante aspect of it. But right now, I'm like, you're very much like maroon antihero. Like you're you're playing karma, but I think it's gonna come back on you. Like, <laughs> so yeah. I think I'd already. I think like her karma, like it's. Uh, well, I mean, it hit the end of last season, but I was. I think like. She's gone through so much that, like, we just, you know, season one, we kind of just, like, pushed under the rug of, like, I mean, yeah, sure. She, like, continually gets forgotten by her, her mom and, like, cast aside. And, like, yeah. the only way she felt like she could have a voice was to become Lady Whistledown. She watched the person that she liked 
marry someone else and was very happy to support them like even though it hurt her so much was going to support yeah Rihanna and and Colin and then everything through season two just to like have it all come crashing down and then to hear Colin like honestly just to, like hear Colin talk so bad about her I know he's an f boy right now I was like just instant karma between like with Eloise thing of like yeah she could do all this stuff and she's but yeah anyway yeah yeah <laughs> yeah i have so many thoughts on penelope i know so i know i know i'm gonna come around to her okay. i'm gonna like the season but right now i'm just like Ugh. girl i just which is funny because again eloise was my least favorite character but in that in that situation i was like you are very justified and penelope is so out of line like yes all right so next one kate i already answered this reputation <laughs> reputation I think that girl could patent reputation, honestly. I think, but again, like, ugh, I don't know. There's so many, there's so many different eras, but I, I just think she is who she is. She has never apologized for that, and I don't think she ever will, and I applaud her for that, and she's always had that confidence that we, I feel like we should all strive for reputation, because, like, Midnight's, she's had to go through a lot of stuff, and I feel like reputation and Midnight's are, like, foils is that the right word like they're, they're similar but I just think Midnight's is the opposite side of the confidence coin like I feel like it's coming from mm -hmm. more of a lack of confidence and more of like a like you've got songs like like karma and vigilante shit and you're like oh great but then you also have the self-awareness of like anti-hero and like like you're on your own, kid. Whereas reputation is just very... Everything from, like... So, I don't know the English words for this, but an ASL. <laughs> We're gonna... Because yeah. English words are not always easy. So, like, Midnight's is, like, very, like, perspective of, like, you're able to, like, take a step back and, like, view it. Yeah. Whereas, almost, like, reputation is just, like, yeah, like, we have this perspective, we can still view it, but, like, you're just so much, like, zoomed in. It's more... So it's like this like self analytical or like very self inside, like kind of like it's not surface level because like confidence isn't surface level, but Midnight's is such a more like holistical view of I think it's confidence and self. Yeah. In my the best way that I know how words can describe this. Yeah. I think that it could be for sure. I as, yeah, I can see that perspective. To me, reputation is just more, I know who I am, and Midnight's is more, I've lost who I am. I don't know. Yeah. Like, like Midnight's, she, like, there's, there's self-awareness there, but there's a lack of confidence. Whereas reputation, I think there might be a little bit less self-awareness, but there's, there's just, I am who I am, and you're going to like it or not. You know? And I feel like that's very much yeah. Kate. Like, I don't think she's coming at it from a place of hurt to confidence. I think it is just, like, I am strong in who I am, and this is who I am, and you like it or you don't kind of thing. I don't know. That's my difference in those kinds of confidences. I like this a lot. Um, <laughs> I love it. <laughs> okay. Two more. Kay. Lady Danbury. Oh, love this queen. <laughs> love of my life. The sass this woman has. Oh, her one-liners are great. But I also love how she takes no shit. Yes. Like, I love Queen Charlotte, but she was a little bit mm, out there. <laughs> lady Danbury had to be like, ah, uh, you have power and privilege, lady. Use it. You know? I... I might just have to, reason. Yeah, I might just have to go with reputation. Voice of reason and the voice of chaos, because in Queen Charlotte, she was the voice of reason. In literally any part of the Bridgerton series, she's the voice of chaos. Yeah, no, but that's facts, though. I think I might just have to go with reputation again, honestly. Or red. I think she also has, like... I was going to say, I think she has a little bit of red. Yeah. Because she definitely has a... Her backstory is so sad. I think it would be... I think it would be I mean, red with a, with a reputation rising. 
<laughs> she has the same person as Anthony. That's really interesting. She has like the same. We've like yeah. given her like the same. A little bit as Anthony. Yeah, I think they are very similar. Because Anthony also has a lot of good one, one-liners. And he, like, he'll do things, by, like, like pay for his brother's college without telling him, like. Yeah. Yeah, they are very similar. There never are thought- characters that mirror each other that we just, like, never realized. Or yeah. never really realized until we've <laughs> done this. Yeah, because I don't think they really interact ever. I think that he's scared of her. I think he said, like, one scene with her, maybe. He doesn't yeah. interact with her a lot. That's so funny. Yeah, because I think he's scared of her when he brings over Kate's horse or something. But I don't think he has a lot of scenes with her. Interesting. In the book, because I've only read the first book, and I didn't like it, so I'm not going to read the rest. Same. Um, I couldn't get through it. I finished it out of spite, because I wanted it to be better, and then it just didn't. Um, yeah. Oh, okay. I'm sorry to anyone who is watching this who really likes the books. I just couldn't do it. I know. Um, <laughs> Okay, one more. We've got to wrap this up. Um, so Edwina. Edwina. I love Edwina. I oh man. My baby girl. Maybe speak now. I think speak now. My favorite yeah. thing about Edwina is I loved her and Kate together because they were such different types of strength. And I really think about that when I watch Cinderella too. Like I think so many people are like, oh my god, she, like, got a castle and a prince and that was it. And I'm like, yeah, but having that amount of kindness, to me at least, who does not have that level of kindness, is such a strength in a different kind of way. And I feel like Anwina really has that going for her, and I really like seeing that. And I think that that's more speak now. Like, she's... She's enchanted, but she also, she speaks up for what she wants in a softer way. And I think that that's just as powerful. All right. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'm curious. Did you agree? Did you disagree? Let me know down below. Please like and subscribe for more. And I hope you guys have a great rest of your week. Maybe watch season three next week when it comes out. Keep getting lost in your dreams and I will see you next time. Bye guys.